today I will be talking about Kagi, a new search engine that I have been using throughout some of its development. But keep in mind that things are subject to change with the search engine because it is currently only in beta and in is and is in heavy development. But for that disclaimer, why don't we get into it? So why don't we talk about one of the most important things when it comes to a search engine above privacy for many people. This is results. So results are one of the most important things that most ordinary internet users want because of course terrible results means you're not really having a good time when using a search engine. So, uh, Kagi gets results from Google and Bing, as well as their own crawlers, which are implemented in some experimental search engines, and links to those search engines are in the description. But according to the their search page, they extract search data from Apple, Google, Microsoft, Yelp, Wikipedia, and others. I will not be doing a side-by-side comparison with other search engines in in this video when it comes to results. One, because that would be a separate video in itself. And two, the search engine crawler is always being improved and the way that they handle results is always being improved. And a comparison like that might not be valid a couple months down the road. When it comes to features, Kagi has quite a few interesting ones that are quite unique to it. One of the features is digs, which finds interesting finds from the entered search term that wouldn't usually be in the standard results because they might be a bit more kind of wacky maybe, but uh, they're instead placed in a widget on the search page if you enable it in settings. And on a similar note, Kagi has a thing called Blast from the Past, which is also a widget and is basically, from what I know, uh, it gets relevant old results from the Internet Wayback Machine based on your search query and puts them all into a widget. So this means that you can look at some old deleted pages that might be helpful if you're looking at old stuff that might no longer exist. Uh, I sometimes look through old websites and look for like old software and sometimes it might be helpful to be able to go to old uh, pages that might no longer be on the internet because web pages aren't there forever. And uh, it could help you find relevant info which is pretty cool. It also has an instant answers feature which is pretty helpful and it also has a setting that masks your searches in your web browser's history, which is pretty neat. Another feature is the fact that it has a a thing called lenses, which lets users filter results based on certain parameters and make their own lenses, which I'll talk about a bit later. When it comes to lenses, that are default, there is a discussions lens which allows you to search forums and to a similar point there's a programming lens which only shows results from programming forums and sites. I personally found the programming one a bit hit and miss and the forums one because sometimes it would just come up with uh, random search results with the word forum or similar in them that needs to be perfected but they say they're working on it and it's not an easy issue so I'll take the word for that one there's also a pdf lens which only shows pdfs as well as an edu filter that only shows edu educational sites Another interesting lens is the News360 lens, which gives you news from trusted sources, although I am not sure how they work out what is trusted or not. Another cool feature is the ability to create custom lenses, which I mentioned earlier, which allows you to filter results based on their domain name, so you can get results from a certain domain or exclude results from certain domains. It also allows you to only show results which have which are of a certain type of file. 
It also, uh, you can also make your lenses include results with certain keywords only uh, before or after certain dates. You can also make lenses only show results from yesterday and today. And with your lenses, you can give them a name and a description. When you make uh, or select a lens in settings, uh, make sure it's in the active lens column. And when you go to search something, there should be a bar at the side with all the names of your lenses. You can select one to filter your results and it will just show the results page, but with your lens, which will filter the results. According to Kagi CEO, Kagi will have a premium business model, so when it launches, uh, it won't rely on ads, instead it will charge a monthly fee, which I think is an interesting idea, but I am not sure how many people are willing to pay f for a search engine, especially with the pandemic and people being on a tight budget. Overall, I feel like Kagi is an interesting search engine that does seem to take your privacy seriously with no ads or tracking. However, I am unsure how many people are willing to pay for a search engine, but maybe the market exists. Also, I'm not a fan of them being based in the US, but that is just a minor gripe, I guess. Another gripe that I do have with the search engine is its name. Kagi, which I think is how you pronounce it, isn't the best name to give a search engine. But, you know, I guess uh, they were uh, thought it was a nice name. And, hey, it does sound nice. It, it looks quite nice. But I'm not sure if people will be able to pronounce it. And I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing it properly. So, you know... Uh, I think that might be a problem and they might need to rename it. But apart from that, thanks for watching today's video. You can check me out on LBRY. Of course, you can uh, like, subscribe and share. Of course, if you're on LBRY, that's follow. Uh, or if you're on any other platform that I might be on. If you did enjoy you can check out my uh lemmy community that uh talks about tech news links in the description to that and uh goodbye